Yo, remember when I told y'all that Kevin Hunter was back in court demanding to see Wendy Williams' financial records and demanding that her guardian, Sabrina Morrissey, resume his alimony? Well, Sabrina has hit back with a lawsuit claiming that Kevin actually owes Wendy three months worth of cash that was paid in excess. Child, this is a turn I never expected the case to take. But with Sabrina going after Kevin, people are also just like, ma'am, before you go after Kevin, could you first make sure that Wendy is not in debt and that her only son is not suffering? Because the things we've also heard about the Guardian, girl, is she trying to account for all that money she stole from Wendy? Okay, in a recent court filing by Sabrina, she claimed that the payments to Kevin were to be terminated if Wendy's yearly earned income was less than two times her then yearly income as of February 1st, 2020. The Guardian then said that Wendy, who had not shown up to host the Wendy Williams show for her entire last season, stopped being paid her full salary in October of 2021. But Kevin continued to be paid his alimony. According to Sabrina, as a result, Kevin has been unjustly enriched by the receipt of $112,500. The monthly payment was $37,500. So that times three is $112,500. And Sabrina wants Kevin to pay back the money plus interest. Damn. Sabrina, darling, are we talking about the same Kevin? The same one who has been taking Wendy back to court to get the alimony resumed? Girl, this man doesn't have $12 to pay Wendy back, let alone 112500 Anyway, additionally, The Guardian is asking that the judge place a gag order on Kevin because he has been running his mouth a lot about this case. Sabrina said in court documents, I request that the court increase the protection of this case and issue a gag order, thereby instructing Mr. Hunter not to speak to the press or others except for legal advisors about these matters and to instruct anyone with whom he has previously discussed these matters that they should not communicate about these matters with anyone else. She is also seeking to have the court dismiss Kevin's request to bring the case once again before the court and instead decide whether the case should go to arbitration. Remember just a few weeks ago, Kevin was back in court demanding that Wendy's guardian resume his alimony payments. And in the court documents, he said, on December 8th, 2022, I attended a mediation with Wendy's counsel and Wendy's New York court appointed guardian attorney, Sabrina Morrissey. In that mediation, Wendy's counsel and guardian agreed to provide statements to a accounts and bank records they claimed to have gotten permission from the New York court to provide. He then said that despite supposed assurances from Wendy's guardian and her attorney that they would provide him with Wendy's bank records, they never materialized. So by December 19th, after reportedly failing to get any further correspondence from Wendy's team, Kevin said he emailed the mediator and copied all parties addressing lack of transparency and bad faith in their lack of honesty in mediation. So Kevin essentially reopened their divorce case in court after an out of court court mediation yielded no results. Apparently, he had payments being made to him based on his marital settlement agreement with Wendy, and he claimed in the new court documents that those payments unfairly ceased in January 2022. Kevin's argument was that when Wendy's bank first petitioned to start guardianship proceedings, her Wells Fargo accounts had a lot of money, and from the time her Wells Fargo accounts were frozen to the time Sabrina claimed Wendy had no money left was just under a year. And according to Kevin, it doesn't make sense that the money disappeared within a year. He was saying that Wendy had enough money when they divorced to pay him out in one shot at that point, and that she had enough even in the guardianship agreement to pay him out. And he was demanding to see all the financial records and wanted the guardian to resume paying his alimony. Now he is talking about how the payment stopped in January 2022, and Sabrina is like, sir, you actually owe us three months of payment because you were paid in excess. Well, we have some people saying that Sabrina should probably be taking care of the other things that need caring for before she can go after Kevin. According to most people, Sabrina has not been sorting some of the things Wendy would have prioritized if she was the one handling her own money. And with the way she's going after Kevin, it's giving she wants to recover the money she has stolen. I mean, the feds recently hit Wendy with a lawsuit claiming that she owes them over 500k for federal taxes between 2019 and 2021. Records state that the lien was approved in January this year and was recorded with the New York City Department of Finance at the beginning of February. In fact, her things had to be cleared out from her apartment. And in photos taken of the luxury building, the apartment owned by Wendy was captured having been fully cleared out. Previous photos showed Wendy's belongings through the windows, filling every room. But recent photos show that all the personal effects were gone, with only a large chandelier remaining in the empty space. Even Kevin Jr., who opened up in Wendy's Lifetime docuseries about being cut off from his mother's money after she was placed in guardianship, was served with an eviction notice on his posh apartment in February. The 
eviction notice went on to allege that Kevin, who signed the lease in November, had failed to pay February's rent and owed the building a total sum of a little over $4,000. Kevin was served a three-day notice of non-payment of his rent on February 6th. And for those who recall, that's not the first time he was served with an eviction notice. Sometime in 2022, Kevin had also been evicted from his luxury $2 million apartment for, again, failure to pay his rent. Knowing Wendy, these are things she would have sorted out if she had control over her money. And with the way her money situation has been going, people have really been giving Sabrina the side eye. Plus, it doesn't help that when Wendy's family spoke to People Magazine, they said that they don't know where Wendy is being treated, they don't know what kind of treatments are taking place, and they can't even contact her directly because of her guardian. Like, they only hear from Wendy if she calls, and Wanda even specifically said that people who love her cannot see her. I think the big question is, how the hell did we get here? The family members also said that they blame the lack of communication on Wendy's guardian, whose identity was previously private, and according to the family, the guardian is the only one with full access to Wendy Williams. In fact, Alex Finney was on The View claiming that they had no say over the guardianship, and they had no way of communicating with Wendy about what was happening in the family, including her father being sick. And most times, it took up to months before the guardian got back to the family with any sort of information. All of a sudden, there was just this wall that went down, uh -huh. and the family was blocked out. It was in April of 2022, yeah. and the contact from that point on has been so limited. And it's even more concerning considering Sabrina has a history of controversy herself, including an ongoing lawsuit in which she is accused of robbing a separate client of $30 million. Also, as far as Wendy is concerned, her close friend Regina Hall revealed Sabrina is in control of Wendy's money and how she can spend it. And she really doesn't like how Wendy's money is being spent. Um, when I was in New York and staying with Wendy in the summer, I noticed when she would call, she had no access to her money. So every time she had to do anything that she had to pay for, she had to go through the Guardian. Regina also accused Sabrina of delaying her response and reaction time when she would respond at all. And she went on to explain that when Wendy would order her breakfast early in the morning, Sabrina would take the order, but sometimes it wouldn't show up until several hours later. And so Wendy wouldn't have any food. And when I went back to LA, I would have to send her food from Los Angeles to New York for through delivery service because she wasn't get the communication wasn't there and she had no other access to money than this guardian. Honey, Sabrina also tried to stop Wendy's documentary from airing, and she filed a lawsuit claiming that it was a blatant exploitation of a vulnerable woman with a serious medical condition who is beloved by millions within and outside of the African-American community. But the network was like, sis, when we first told you about this documentary, you were fine with it, and you are only mad now because it's exposing you in the process. So it's possible that Sabrina doesn't actually have Wendy's best interest at heart. And a lot of people are actually wondering if she's only asking Kevin to pay back Wendy so that she can steal more of her money or recover the money that's missing. Maybe she needs to take care of Wendy and her son first before she can go after Kevin. But what do you think? Is Sabrina going after Kevin before sorting out Wendy's other money issues a little sus? In fact, what's your real opinion of what's really going on with Wendy's money? And what do you think of Kevin still going back to the court to demand more money? Drop those thoughts in the comments section below.